Hi there, my name's Rupert Breakspear. I'm a ceramicist based in Worcester in the West Midlands. Um, and I have a background in archaeology, but also in education, both in formal education as a teacher, but also working in environmental education for many years. I completed a master's in ceramics in 2016 at the University of Bath Spa. Um, my work focuses primarily on an investigation of uh, landscape and of materials and local economy and society and therefore I'm interested in function and I'm particularly interested in the environments where there have been uh, associations with ceramic extraction or ceramic manufacture and I like to go and try and find clays that I can dig or rock dusts and ashes and other clays that I can use in glaze making um, so much of my work is about investigation on a kind of geographical level and geological level. I'm very careful to gain permission uh, for any of the extraction, any of the digging that I do. Um, and really that's always on a very small scale. And I'm uh, very mindful to backfill and to cover my tracks and leave as little trace as I can. And I like my work, which is nearly all functional. Um, to reflect the landscape and as I said to reflect the local economy and society um, so as to try and kind of evoke something of that place. So um, the work that I do often has a connection to local industry for example so I have a connection with Brooklady Distillery up on the island of Islay and the whiskey tumbler you saw in the previous slide is made from the local clay there and the rock dust and ashes from the island. Um, and that ties in very well with Brookladdy's approach to local sourcing. Um, so I'm also uh, fascinated by um, other aspects of, of making flow. For example, this baking bowl um, was made with clays up north of Halifax near the workshop of Isaac Button, who made baking bowls for the local community up there. Isaac Button being a great local country potter. And then these beer beakers you can see in this slide are made from clay up on Clee Hill, close to my favourite brewery, Hobson's, uh, which produces a very fine brew. Um, and again, that's local clay, local dusts and ashes. In terms of process, I collect the clay and I dry it before bashing it up to form granules, like you can see here, kind of granules and dust. Um, and then once I've created that material, I mix that with water to create a slip and I create that slip by blunging with either with my hand or with a big stick to try and create a fine as fine a slip as I can that I can then pour through uh, a sieve uh, a 30 sieve is the one I use which allows some of the material like the sand and the grit to go through a small proportion of it that gives the clay I feel more character and I prefer throwing those clays some potters like to put their slips through a 60 sieve to create a finer clay body. Once it's through this, the sieve, then I let the clay settle and the water kind of comes to the top and I can pour that water away to then pour the clay slip out onto plaster bats where I let it dry. And once it's dry, I can then work the clay up into a, into a kind of a workable body, into a workable clay. So I wedge it and I knead it um, making sure I get rid of patches of clay that's too soft or too hard um, and I get it to the absolute consistency that I like. So um, one of the concepts that's really important that runs through all of this is um, the idea of palimpsest, uh, a concept that was developed by a geographer, W.G. Hoskins, in the 1950s in his book The Making of the Eng English Landscape. This idea really is that uh, the landscape is made up of many, many layers uh, that uh, and features that if we look hard enough can really can give us clues and ideas about the associations that we've had as people over time with our landscape. Um, and uh, the connection here is, for me, was that in the museum store there's this beautiful Roman mortarium, a Roman mortarium made in southern Gaul by a potter who we know, his name, we know it was Geotisius Gratus. Uh, I thought it was a wonderful thing that kind of connected me to my baking bowl experiences. Um, but it also um, led me into an investigation of its association with Warwickshire, which has an amazing history and association with clay, whether it's, um, I'll come back to the mortaria in a second, or more recently, for example, the brickworks in uh, Leamington Spa, the Lillington and Leamington brickworks that produced the bricks for the rapid expansion of the town in the early 19th century. 
Um, that's just one of the other connections that Warwickshire has with ceramics. Um, but this particular connection with Mortaria I thought was fascinating because up in North Warwickshire there are a series of Roman kiln sites where thousands and thousands of these mixing bowls, which were uh, the Romans used for mixing sauces, they had a kind of gritty inside and the, uh, they would mix their sauces and grind them up um, and up near Mansita, just off the A5, is one of the, the largest of these kiln sites and um, I went up there and I field walked and I found shards of Roman pottery um, of that amazing kind of white ceramic uh, fabric that you could see in that, that previous picture. So I walked the site and I found shards and I talked to the farmer and he was very absolutely, you know, so helpful and, and kind and he let me dig some of the local clay to take some samples. Um, but what was fascinating was that in my kind of interest in, to, to create something that would reflect the local um, Roman pottery, I, I found that the clays were all red in that area, or mostly in that area, rich red Mercian mudstone. There was plenty of the grit around, which they would have needed to have um, lined the inside of the bowls, these bands of intrusive igneous rock that you can see here at Mansita Quarry. But could I find the white clay? Well, I used an iGeology app to help me track down various potential sources of clay up on Hearts Hill Ridge and out over towards um, Nuneaton. And I found rotted sandstones and other mudstones and Pennine coal measures, lower and middle coal measures, um, which all of which I took samples of. But could I find the white clay? No, I could not. It remained elusive. Um, so anyway, it didn't stop me. I um, carried on hunting. I did find some white material, um, but this white material proved not to be a, um, clay. It proved to be plaster over in the um, abandoned site of um, now a woodland of the old Haunchwood brick and tile uh, works over just near Whittleford on the kind of western side of Nuneaton um, and the brick and tile works and the colliery created an incredibly productive landscape this is just a site looking down into what would have been the mouth of uh, the quar uh, colliery anyway the, um, all of this investigation led me or well, left me with a series of local clays that I prepared, as I've described earlier, and created test tiles that you can see here. Um, those were the test tiles dry. These are the test tiles dry, um, fired rather, to biscuit temperatures to 1000 degrees centigrade. Um, and you can see that they have changed colour and they've also shrunk and some of them have warped and the character of the clay began to kind of expose itself to me or reveal itself to me. And in this slide you can see on the left side the tiles have been fired to earthenware firing temperatures, glazing temperatures, with some samples I made up. But on the right, those tiles are fired to stoneware temperatures, and that's to around 1,250. And that allowed me to use the local rock dusts from Mantata Quarry and the clay and local wood ash to create a variety of glazes that you can see in these test bowls in the picture. And that was what I was really looking for, something that would allow me to make a series of ceramic vessels that were 100% North Warwickshire in origin. I also spent a lot of time then investigating the form of, kind of that Mortaria um, have that is so special to them. So the flaring rim, the spouts, the beautiful internal curve, but particularly that internal rim. That's something we don't see in mixing bowls today but seemed to be a really prominent and important feature to the Romans so that whatever you were mixing didn't slop out over the edges. And so that's something I reflected then in my work that went into the exhibition. So it's been a fascinating uh, sort of set of months or six months to a year actually of exploration and discovery, finding things that I didn't expect to find. I stumbled on the Haunchwood Brick and Tile Works completely by chance. Um, and it got me thinking really about how how incredibly varied and deep the association between local landscapes and ceramics really is and how so much of that uh, experience and so much of that the skill and association has now vanished. Once um, I had collected all my materials and made my tests and my bowls I put together a plan for the exhibition. It's kind of a very rough sketch. It was my first rough sketch for the exhibition and then the week before lockdown yep we managed to get the show up 
and it's sitting there now in an empty museum and art gallery. But if you want to know more, I'm at rbreaksbeer.com or look for me on Breaksbeer Ceramics on Instagram. Many thanks, and I hope you've enjoyed this talk. <laughs>